The future of business belongs to those who adapt quickly and think proactively. To emerge successfully despite drawbacks from the last couple of years, you need a reliable partner that keeps a positive outlook of the future, understands the trends, and is able to elevate your business. A reliable partner that can help you reach your goals and keep your business protected. As pioneers of telecommunications in the country, Eastern Communications has always been the solutions partner of choice for the biggest and most successful industry players in the country. At Eastern, customers come first. Our first motivation for innovation and first in our mind to serve. Our customers are the answer to our why. We aim to create healthy and lasting partnerships by identifying their needs and placing their requirements in front of everything. At the end of the day, we want to give the best possible experience for our customers. We understand that our customers have unique needs. We put the human connection in everything that we do. Our heart of service is shown through our brand of personalized services. We offer the right solutions, choose the right talent, and work with only the best partners for enterprise, small and medium enterprises, and consumer needs. At Eastern, the industries that we serve always stay ahead of the game. Our high-tech and high-touch solutions allow us to view the world through our customers' eyes and provide them the most meaningful experience. Our data, internet, and voice solutions, which forms our connectivity solutions, provide you with reliable, congestion-free connectivity when and where you need it. Attacks can happen anytime and when you least expect them. But with our security solutions, your network, your data, and your customer's data are protected. Whether it's before, during, or after an attack, we are here to ensure that data risk and security measures are implemented. As we evolve with a fast-paced digital economy, it is essential to be equipped with the most up-to-date and secure cloud computing technology. Our cloud and data center solutions ensure that you have the resources to innovate faster, collaborate seamlessly, and serve your customers efficiently. To ensure that your company resources, the devices connected to your network, can efficiently communicate with each other and other networks and enable you to effectively conduct your day-to-day -day business operations, we have a healthy suite of products under our network solutions portfolio. Remote work is here to stay. And as this shift in work setup continues, the most reliable business applications should be adapted. With our business applications, your employees can work remotely and maintain their productivity and efficiency. Finally, as your business partners, we provide you with consulting, maintenance, and delivery services to make sure that you have the right solutions to address your business needs with our Eastern services. We have a long-standing commitment to keep a better connected and a digitally secure country. By constantly expanding our footprint, we are reaching and bringing our services to areas where our services are needed the most. We believe that hand in hand, we can forge a much brighter future. Together, let's emerge stronger.
The future of business belongs to those who adapt quickly and think proactively. To emerge successfully despite drawbacks from the last couple of years, you need a reliable partner that keeps a positive outlook of the future understands the trends, and is able to elevate your business. A reliable partner that can help you reach your goals and keep your business protected. As pioneers of telecommunications in the country, Eastern Communications has always been the solutions partner of choice for the biggest and most successful industry players in the country. At Eastern, customers come first. Our first motivation for innovation and first in our mind to serve. Our customers are the answer to our why. We aim to create healthy and lasting partnerships by identifying their needs and placing their requirements in front of everything. At the end of the day, we want to give the best possible experience for our customers. We understand that our customers have unique needs. We put the human connection in everything that we do. Our heart of service is shown through our brand of personalized services. We offer the right solutions, choose the right talent, and work with only the best partners for enterprise, small and medium enterprises, and consumer needs. At Eastern, the industries that we serve always stay ahead of the game. Our high-tech and high-touch solutions allow us to view the world through our customers' eyes and provide them the most meaningful experience. Our data, internet, and voice solutions, which forms our connectivity solutions, provide you with reliable, congestion-free connectivity when and where you need it. Attacks can happen anytime and when you least expect them. But with our security solutions, your network, your data, and your customer's data are protected. Whether it's before, during, or after an attack, we are here to ensure that data risk and security measures are implemented. As we evolve with a fast-paced digital economy, it is essential to be equipped with the most up-to-date and secure cloud computing technology. Our cloud and data center solutions ensure that you have the resources to innovate faster, collaborate seamlessly, and serve your customers efficiently. To ensure that your company resources, the devices connected to your network, can efficiently communicate with each other and other networks and enable you to effectively conduct your day-to-day -day business operations, we have a healthy suite of products under our network solutions portfolio. Remote work is here to stay. And as this shift in work setup continues, the most reliable business applications should be adapted. With our business applications, your employees can work remotely and maintain their productivity and efficiency. Finally, as your business partners, we provide you with consulting, maintenance, and delivery services to make sure that you have the right solutions to address your business needs with our Eastern services. We have a long-standing commitment to keep a better connected and a digitally secure country. By constantly expanding our footprint, we are reaching and bringing our services to areas where our services are needed the most. We believe that hand in hand, we can forge a much brighter future. Together, let's emerge stronger.
and we are live wow a pleasant afternoon everyone and welcome back to reimagining resilience e huddle series this is apple grace mendoza and maka eastern it is my absolute pleasure to be your host once again this afternoon okay maka eastern alam niyo naman that last may 19 we had so much fun and gained a lot of learnings with our speakers so they were talking about resilience and how we should be able to integrate this in our business processes. So today, Maka Eastern, we will once again tackle this topic from a different angle. So please keep your energy high and listen carefully. And may I suggest that you get a pen and a paper so you can easily jot down, you know, new information and learnings that you may utilize for your personal or your business reference. And as we proceed with our program, Maka Eastern, and while our speakers are sharing their presentations, please do leave your comments and more importantly, your questions in our chat box. Okay, mga Ka Eastern or our Ka Eastern team will be taking note of all your questions and we will try our best to have your questions answered during our Q&A portion later in the program. Woohoo! Wow. So lastly, mga Ka Eastern to make this an even more memorable and enjoyable session, we will be posting some questions in the chat box. So not just one, not just five, but 10 lucky participants will get a chance to win 500 pesos worth of vouchers from Giftaway. Okay, and our winners for today will be announced in the chat box also. So make sure, Maka Eastern, that your username is easily identifiable and it is the same name that you used when you registered for our e huddle. So that's very easy. And on top of that, Maka Eastern, we have a raffle draw where everyone who registered will get a chance to win amazing prizes from Eastern Communications this afternoon. Kaya naman, where else would you rather be this moment, mga Eastern, di ba? But right here, right now. Okay, let us know in the comment section if you agree with me. You can type in yes or like exclamation points. Let us know. All right, so to get this program started, mga Eastern, here to welcome all of us. Let us all welcome the head of sales of Eastern Communications, none other than Mr. Michael Castaneda. Thank you, Apple. Good afternoon to all our speakers and participants. Allow me to extend my sincere gratitude to everyone for taking the time to attend today's webinar. When we first conceptualized eHuddle at the height of the pandemic, we were heartbroken when we heard about the announcements of so many business closures and massive employee retrenchment. Our team moved fast in the midst of the fear, isolation, and widespread hopelessness. We launched eHuddle with an aim to save what was possibly left in every enterprise, the people's spirit. Today, we take the eHuddle to the next level. We really cannot predict what lies ahead in the future. What Eastern Communications and our partners can commit to you is that we will never cease look, to look for solutions and emerging business models to provide meaningful learning that will support and benefit all of you. Oftentimes, you can feel devastated and shattered. But at the core of it all, we can build from within, huddle together, and emerge stronger and better. May each moment of the Reimaging Resilience series count because our goal in mind is for all of you to someday take the stand and share your success story. Thank you very much, and I wish all of you a great day. God bless us all. Maraming salamat, and it's great to see you again, Sir Michael Casaneda. Thank you so much, sir, for the warm welcome as always. And yes, Maka Eastern, of the mere presence and your unwavering support from all of you, our partners, really is, you know, one of the strongest 
driving forces that pushes Eastern communications to continue to innovate, evolve, and connect us to businesses and our partners with only the best high-tech and high-touch approach of service unique to Eastern communications. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po. Now, mga ka-Eastern, let us begin our e-huddle by letting me introduce our keynote speaker for today. Are you all excited? Yes? Okay, so here to talk to us about on-brand digital community strategy and management. He is a perfectionist senior executive with 18 years of experience in business development and product management in the fields of IT, media, advertising, or advertising and telecommunications in Southeast Asia. Maka Eastern, let us all welcome the president and CEO of True Digital Philippines Incorporated, Mr. Dindo Marzan. All right, thank you Apple for that wonderful introduction. So thanks to our event organizer and ETPI for inviting me to talk to you guys Basically, what I'm going to discuss is about digital community strategy and management. But in particular, where and how do you start? Kasi usually, nahihirapan tayo, ano ba tong online communities? Ano ba tong mga social media na to? Paano ba natin sisiguraduhin na we have that proper strategy? We have that proper plan or campaign? I will really lead you step by step to get there. So first things first, no? Let's assume you've done your homework. Meaning, alam mo na sino yung target market mo bilang company, bilang small or medium enterprise. Alam mo yung pinapa, yung yung gusto mo makuha na customer. Uh, is it uh, is it Gen Zs, mga bata ba, or would it be mga older people? Um, alam mo kung ano yung hulma ng personality niya. Yon ang isa yun sa homework. Pangalawa, how are you actually positioning or or introducing your brand to the market. So, let's say, check ka na doon, di ba? Alam mo na na parang, okay, nagbebenta ako ng milk tea, or number two, nagbebenta ako ng toys. How do I position it? Ah, para to sa mga hobbies, or para to sa mga mahilig sa, sa takoyaki. Anything that, that you actually want to portray regarding your brand or product. Third, ano key message mo? Anong gusto mo sabihin sa kanila? Ikaw ba ang may pinakamasarap na sisig? Ikaw ba ang merong pinakamagaling na BPO service? Ano yung gusto mong sabihin na mensahe sa kanila? Medyo ika-crash course ko to. No? This is basically more on sa marketing side. Pero these are important things that you should do before you even actually deal with digital community management or digital community engagement. Last, uh, um, yung sumunod doon, yung strategic alignment. It has to be important that it's aligned with your company, especially if you're operating an SME, tapos group of brands kayo. No? Pwede kasi minsan may mother company. Sure ba tayo na hindi ito nagko-conflict with any other initiatives that uh, the company has? And ang pinaka-importante is that may approved budget ka. Let's say ikaw yung brand manager or ikaw yung marketing manager. Do you have the approved budget already to, to start an online community or start social media marketing. So yun, lahat yun, assume natin, okay na. You already know those things. Now, I will tell you where to start. The first place where you should start or the first point that you need to consider, and this is uh, a, a framework that we've been using in True Digital and in particular for the brand True ID. Kaya sabi ko, let's assume you've done your homework. In my case, let's say I am the brand manager and my brand or product is True ID. True ID is an OTT platform, over-the-top platform, parang Netflix, parang iFlix, View, yung mga ganyan. Pero more than that, digital lifestyle din kasi siya, hindi lang siya puro videos. May articles din, iba't ibang content, may games, um, meron ding mga um, premium content from Thailand. So, assuming I've done my homework, I actually start with one important thing, content. It starts with content. Anong content ba yung gagamitin ko? to engage my digital customers or sometimes referred to as online communities or digital communities. I just want to make sure everyone is 
familiar with the different types of content. And in a snapshot here, you can see that there are several types of content that you can use. Of course, yung pinakasikat video. Pero dun pa lang sa video, iisipin mo, video on demand ba gagamitin mo? When I say video on demand, recorded siya. Or magla-live ka ba? Parang pang nag fb live. Gagawin mo bang content? Scripted? Pag sinabing scripted, yung parang may kwento pa. Parang yung mga Jollibee, Jollibee serie. Or non-scripted ba? Na parang talk show style. Yun yung, style, yun yung mga different types of video. Articles, self explanatory story, um, infographic, yung mga nakikita nyo maraming images tas parang pinapakita na um, this is how you can use my product or this is how you consume a ramen. Yung mga mag pa infographic na para ma-engage yung users about your brand with your brand or your product. I'm sure you're, part, you're very much familiar with blogging. It's basically like um, uh, a personal diary that's done online by key opinion leaders or influencers. Picture, syempre. Pag image lang, nag-post ka, let's say, sa social media. And then yung iba pa, slideshow and podcast. Um, yung slideshow, eto parang ginagawa ko. This is a slideshow. It's a content. It's a presentation. And then yung podcast, of course, yung napapakinggan natin sa Spotify or mga recording. Para siyang radio, pero recorded siya. On demand siya. You can actually access through podcast networks or websites. So dapat alam mo muna yung options mo. Let's say meron ka na. Let's say we simplify it. You just have a simple video, a short form video of two or three minutes. Then you're good to go. You can go and go uh, proceed to the next step. Um, the next step is ask yourself, if I go for a video, should I go for professionally made content or user-generated content? Ano ba difference ng dalawa? Professionally made content, yan yung usually mahal. Yan yung million-million yung gagastusin mo kasi parang parang Netflix level yung video or sobrang sobrang edited, sobrang produced by by so many people. Usually it's a production team. Yung user generated content na pag nag-level up ka and I I refer to this internally to us, we refer to it as, as creator generated content. Kasi lalo na nung nag-pandemic, dumami lalo ang mga Filipino sa magaling gumawa ng content. This creator generated content is something between an plain UGC Yung UGC na sinasabi ko yan yung napapanood nyo sa TikTok, sayaw-sayaw lang, o kaya nag-post lang ng video sa Facebook na very raw, not edited. And then yung professionally made, as I said, yung parang Netflix level. The creator-generated content is somewhere in between. So you can refer to it as user or creator-generated content kasi at the end of the day, yung gumawa nun, individual pa rin, except lang gumaling siya sa paggawa niya. So ito yung mga medyo... Maayos lang panoorin, like yung mga BuzzFeed video. Yung mga napapanood natin na ang gandang food videos, pinanood mo na gumawa ng sandwich, o kaya may ginawa na cooking recipe. Pero ang ganda ng pagkagawa, cut, cut, cut lang, tas two or three minutes. That's what I'm talking about, a creator-generated content. So in this presentation, I'll, I'll focus more on creator-generated content kasi... But naman tayo, I mean, okay na may professional made content, pero paano kung approved budget lang natin would be 20,000 pesos or 50,000 pesos. Hindi ka talaga makagawa ng matindihang content doon. So, a user-generated content, as I said, yan yung nilalagay online, no? Na pinopost, either pinopost sa Facebook, ginawa mo dahil gusto mo yung brand, gusto mo yung product. Ang UGC kasi mas authentic. And sa ngayon, when you deal with digital communities, it's very important to establish authenticity. Naamoy na kasi ng mga users or ng mga customers kung pinepeke mo. Nalalaman nila kung, kung scripted, kung masyadong pinlano. Pero pag mas raw siya at ang nagsalita, it's a key opinion leader or alam niya. Halimbawa, yung magaling kumilatis ng masarap na burger o kaya yung magaling kumilatis ng magandang software tapos nagbibigay siyang opinion or commentary whether he does that live recorded or through an article or a blog that's what i'm talking about yun yung UGC na mas gusto nating i-leverage in engaging communities so i'll go through the types of user generated content para at least alam niyo muna again ano yung mga options niyo before we go to the hardcore part of digital community 
engagement, strategy, and, and management. No? So ayan, social media content, yan yung mas alam natin. Pinos sa Instagram, sa Facebook, blog post, as I said, parang diary siya. Ayan, like three ways to enhance um, your um, blog post with Canva. Yung video content, that's what I spoke about earlier. Vlogs, which is a uh, blog pero video, kaya tinawag na vlog. Um, live stream, yung ginagawang FB Live. Uh, Diyan din magkukuha under yung, alam nyo yung pamain, pamain. Yung nagsosocial commerce ka or online selling, live selling, dito rin nagpo-follow yun. Kasi that's video content. Ayan, nagpipenta siya na, I think, ointment yan. The Q&A forum here uh, is also an example of uh, UGC. Ito, hindi natin masyadong naiisip, no? Kasi parang feeling natin, nag-post lang, naglagay ng five-star rating yung nakikita natin sa Lazada or Shopee. User-generated content doon. Magulat kayo, yung iba kinakalir yung review doon, a-upload talaga ng video habang binuksan yung package, tapos papakita kung gano'ng kaganda yung quality nung nabili niya na na, na material or, or na, na, na item. Next one. Next one would be case studies. Ito yung mga mas hardworking. Yung talagang merong, let's say, nag-review ng services mo or ng brand mo or ng product mo. So ito, mga sapo nito, pinaw sa LinkedIn, pinaw sa isang website, and they're already sharing something about the brand. And this is also something that would help your brand. Uh, when it comes to user-generated content. Whether you commission or collaborate with a creator or a writer, for that matter, um, it's up to you how you want to do it. Or if you want to do it yourself. Kaya lang, ang problem, pag ikaw mismo gumawa, ikaw nagsulat, very self-serving naman yon. Let's say ikaw yung CEO ng company, but ikaw rin yung nagsulat about your brand. Parang iisipin, bias. And that's when I, that's what I'm talking about authenticity. Kasi syempre, mas gusto natin yung mga testimonials nang gagaling sa actual customers or actual users of our product. So now we're we're kind of familiar kasi crash course na ang dating nito. We know content, alam mo na kung anong gagamitin mong content. Let's go now to the to the more hard working part of this framework that I shared with you that we're using in True Digital. Um, now you need to understand more what communities are and how to create a campaign for these communities. So first things first, syempre, para clear, no? let's define what a community is. If you actually just Google it, I just Google this, thank God for Google, right? A group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. So hinighlight ko lang doon kasi importante yun, dapat may something in common sila. And interestingly, Meron pangalawa pang definition, a feeling of fellowship with, with others. Uh, let's anchor that definition sa fellowship. Importante na nakaka-relate to each other yung members ng community na yun. Kasi kung parang basta lahat lang sila, nandun lang sa community, pero wala, dead ma sila sa isa't isa, hindi sila nag-uusap, that's not a community. Parang wala lang, kinolekta mo lang sila, pinagsama-sama lang, mo lang sila sa isang lugar. The fellowship is important in terms of defining that. So at its root, an online community or internet community, which, we're, what, we're, what, which is what we're discussing here, is a group of people with a shared interest or purpose. So our assumption, yung shared interest or purpose na yun, has something to do with your brand or your product. Like BTS, di ba? Ang tawag sa community nila, ARMY. Lahat ng mga mahilig sa BTS music, sama-sama. At pag nagsama-sama sila, pare-pareho silang titili sa concert. Pare-pareho silang mag she share ng post about may bagong song ng ng BTS. Okay, lahat ng mahilig sa milk tea. Lahat sila magko-comment, "Oh, ito ang bagong milk tea na lumabas ngayon. Uh, try it out." Kasi may common interest. So, 'yun important 'yun. So, let's say you relate it to your product. It's either specifically your brand or the type of product that your brand is associated with. That's where you start thinking about a community related to your brand or product.
So sorry, framework na naman kasi nga, it's all about strategy no? before you even execute. You need to really think things out. Lalo na kung medyo limited yung budget natin. Ikaw talaga didiscard niyan. Lalo na kung ikaw yung owner ng company, wala ka naman talaga brand manager or social media manager, community manager. Usually, ikaw rin yun, di ba? Kung CEO ka, ikaw din lahat gumagawa ng mga yan. Ikaw rin ang gumawa ng Facebook page mo. So I just want to share with you this donut framework. No? So have a donut with your community. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Itong donut na to uh, is composed of three things. You need to observe, you need to evaluate, you need to adapt. So pag hinimay mo under each, yung sa observe, ano ba ibig sabihin pag nag-observe? Number one, you listen to the audience. Let's say nakapag-create ka na ng community, whether in a website or on Facebook or on Instagram, pakinggan mo yung audience. And I hope nagsasalita yung audience, no? nagpa-participate. Kung hindi, that's another problem and that's another session for discussion. Pero let's say, nagko-comment na sila, wow, sarap naman yung, ano, yung pagkain na yan or wow, ang high-tech naman yung cellphone na yan. Kung alimaw, cellphone yung binibenta mo. Diba? Pakinggan mo kung ano yung sinasabi nila and mag-respond ka, mag-react ka. Unfortunately, minsan hindi okay na nagre-respond ka as brand. No? Let's say, kung yung community na ginawa mo yung logo lang ng company mo, nobody wants to talk to a logo or to a company. Kaya usually, kung napansin nyo, let's say, mayroong mga pangalan. Limbawa, um, Erica of Gloom. Di ba nilalagyan ng ganun? O kaya, nilalagyan ng personal face na, na meron mismong profile, yung, yung profile pic. Um, yung iba, ganun ang practice in community management para magkaroon ng person behind that logo kasi puro online na lang, di ba? So, that's another approach. Uh, you can have a person be identified with you. So, kaya nga okay din na gumamit ng influencers or brand endorsers na hindi kailangan super sikat, super mahal. Basta at least, it's a face that can be associated to your brand. So that person through the online community can respond to the questions or interact via comments dun sa online community na ginawa mo. Assuming you've put out the content there, no, whether that's an image, a video, article, uh, yun, syempre mag-react yung mga, mga members ng community mo, kahit konti pa yan. After doing the observation, you evaluate now, you share insights. And when I say share insights, you not only share insights within your team, your working team, kasi kailangan malaman kung sino man yung nagsusulat ng article mo na pinapost mo or gumagawa ng image or ng video, kailangan niya malaman para, uy, ang ganda raw nung, um, consum con uh, nung consummation shot nung habang kinakain yung burger na ginawa yung video. Gawa pa tayo ng maraming ganong videos kasi doon nag-react yung community. Another one, when you say share insights, pwede rin na i-involve mo yung community. I-share mo yung insights na parang we've heard that you all want to see how to create your own pasta or your own carbonara due to, due to all your comments and, and sharing of insights or inputs. Here's another take to cooking carbonara. Sample lang ha. Pero mafe-feel nila nakasama sila nung kin-create yung next content that you've put out there. That's when I say you, you share insight also to the community, hindi for internal use lang. And when you actually do that, and you make them, kaya nga yung kanina sabi ko, make them belong to the community, that sense of fellowship, you actually shape to build trust, and you will eventually be able to convince them to click. And when I say click, ito yung sinasabing call to action. No? Click to actually like your page, or click to actually share your video, or share your content, Click to actually buy something or purchase something. Or even click to just download your mobile app. So these things take time. Hindi totoo na parang pag may nilagay kang content dyan, magkakagulo na lang lahat, papanoorin nila agad. You have to build a relationship. It's like when you're joining an organization. When you join an organization, hindi ka naman biglang lilitaw doon and sasabi mo, oh, masarap tong, ano niluto ko, gumili kayo, bayaran nyo to. Diba ang gagawin mo muna, kakaibiganin mo muna yung members ng organization and you know, you develop a personal relationship as much as possible and that relationship depends as you actually get to know more about each other. No? So just associating it, that's how you actually um, have a donut with your community. So ito, mas ano lang, 
articulated strategy and and more on technique no and and you'll sh you'll see this with sample executions that i'll be sharing later but in terms of strategy at true digital we usually look at three things no rewards is important yan. everyone wants freebies perks lalo na sa philippines it's even a phenomenon in the philippines gusto natin ng libre gusto natin ng may 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 bigay na extra aside from let's say sa pinili nating product or aside from uh membership of a club gusto natin may nakukuha tayong mga rewards or incentives number two exclusivity kailangan ma feel ng community members na ah dito ko lang makukuha to dito lang ako nakakapanood ng two minute hack to actually fix my 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 space or para ayusin yung storage ko or yung bedroom ko di ba pwede kasi yung content mo Halimbawa, you're selling bed sheets. Papakita mo paano maglagay ng bed sheet sa sa kama in one minute. Kasi may mga techniques din yan. And yun, it's relevant. It's relatable. It's realistic. Kasi lahat yun, lahat tayo may kama, di ba? So lalo, kailan mo kasi associate yung product mo on a day-to-day -day basis para lahat makarelate dun sa binibenta mo or sa produkto na gusto mong i-promote. And then lastly, yung pag-engage. Ito na yung kanina siya ko, isasagot ka, have a donut with them. So that's basically summarizing a strategy. However, when it comes to execution, ito na kasi yung detalye when you execute the strategy. In the terms of reward, you need to establish a balanced reward system. Meron tayong dalawang klase, extrinsic, extri extrinsic and intrinsic. Yung extrinsic, yung giveaway, yung talagang naka-gamify siya, na tipong... Right there and then, may instant gratification. Tapos, pinopromote mo talaga na namimigay kami ng free trip or namimigay kami ng free vouchers. Ganyan. Yung intrinsic naman, ito yung parang nare-reward ako dahil <clears throat> just being a member of the community, I feel better, I feel happy, I may good vibes. Importante din yun. Hindi yun lahat bigay lang bigay. Otherwise, Pag puro pamigay ka lang, nandun lang sila for the freebies. May tawag kami gan sa ganyan dati, abangers. Nakaabang lang sa libre. Pero totoo, walang relationship with their brand or your product. Ang, ang gusto lang nila, yung libre. Pero wala siyang pakialam dun sa ibang members of community. Kaya dapat, you strike a balance dito sa reward system na ginagawa mo in your online community. Number two, anchor and exclusive content. The more you produce exclusive content that can only be consumed in your website, in your app, in your Facebook page, TikTok page, Instagram page, etc., the better. Kasi talagang pupunta na at pupunta nila yung inestablish mong venue for the community to engage or to to talk with each other or to to participate in. Lastly, Host online and offline events. <clears throat> I know lahat online na like lahat digital, pero lagi may connection pa rin ng online and offline. Kasi at the end of the day, ang real world is offline, di ba? Even though nag-pandemic, na-miss natin na meron mga offline events or talagang ano yun, personal events that you can actually go to. So that's when you actually execute the, the strategies that I've, talk, I've been talking about. So let's look at Sample, uh, sample execution, and especially this new, probably bago to sa inyo, the online to offline, or sometimes referred to as O2O. Important kasi ito, dahil pag natawid mo yung nangyayari online to offline, that's when the magic happens. Kasi parang kung online nakikita yung product mo, tapos pumunta na talaga sila sa actual physical store mo, yun yung okay. Hindi yung parang lahat sila nag-like lang sa Facebook page mo pero actually wala kang nakikita sa kanilang bumibili sa sa physical store mo. So sample lang no, kung nasa social media, nagla-like sila, nag-uusap in real life offline. Ayun yung networking, yung parang talagang nakipag-usap ka, kumo-connect ka, yung biglang mag ka lang to a stranger that in an event. Yung kung may online groups, may meetups na pwedeng meet up talaga physically. Yung mga blogs, email, or search na ginagawa online, buhay pa rin, may print ads pa din. Nakakita ka pa rin ng tarpaulin dyan, di ba? So, that nakokonek din yun. Kung ang campaign mo, nag-exist both online and offline, much better. Yung, yung may app ka na push, 
na kung may mobile app ka tapos mayroon doon push notifications, let's say, nire-remind kung ano yung nasa mobile app mo. Ganon din sa physical store or event. Ikaw mismo sasabi mo, oh, may bago akong flavor na ginawa na coffee. ba? Diba? Or may bago akong flavor na ice cream. Or may bago akong labas na na um, collection for my clothes, for my clothing line. So, yung notifications na yan, nangyayari talaga yan mismo sa actual event. Meaning sa sa physical event or sa physical store. So, dapat makonect natin yung dalawang yun at hindi lahat online lang. Or some example would be nag-purchase online, nakakuha ng voucher, and then yung voucher ginamit pagpunta sa physical store mo. That's another online to offline execution. So, I'll, I'll be more specific, no? These are some O2O and digital community engagement executions. So, syempre, dun sa brand na sinasabi ko, no, through ID. So, ang community dito, yung Pokemon community, and mind you, sobrang laki ng community na to, from kids to adults. So, we had that catch them all on true ID um, execution. Ang engagement nito is about rewards. Pero, ang pinapagawa namin, manood sila ng Pokemon, syempre, sa true ID. But at the same time, anchoring it on the anniversary. Kasi nagkaroon ng 25th anniversary celebration. So sinabay namin doon. And that anniversary did not happen just pure online. Ang dami mga physical events then related to that Pokemon anniversary. Humangkas kami. And ang ginawa namin, um, merong silang ipiprint, pero pwede rin digital. But pinprint nila, tas kailangan nila makita itong mga Pokemons na to within the website of True ID. So, ginimify namin ito. Tapos pag nakumpleto mo kung saan mo nakita, tapos anong episode ng Pokemon, uh, kasi we had the Pokemon series on True ID, then ma fill up mo to at pag nakumpleto mo, that gives you a chance to win these items. No? Meron Pokemon Limited Edition ng Nintendo Switch, some accessories. So, ito nag-go online to offline dito kasi from online lahat ng ginawa, pero yung mga prizes is a physical item no the other one would be our partnership with air asia we call it we called it food trip with air asia and destination true id so medyo may play on travel as destination kasi sila rin um they want to associate their brand uh in food travel and shopping and we have those videos kasi on true id so we coined this food trip with air asia and ang gagawin is you share actually why which scene excites you the most and why in the the videos that we've actually curated for air asia on true id and these are videos that are mostly on about travel or experiencing food and delicacies when you travel so pag sinagot mo yon nag-comment ka doon that's actually a raffle entry na agad. Pinadali na namin, hindi na yung kailangan mag-fill up, fill up. Unlike doon sa Pokemon, kaya lang kasi sa Pokemon, ang tindi ng mga prizes, so medyo may konting ano, collection of customer information, if we may call it, uh, with their consent, of of course. Pero dito sa Air Asia, madali lang, comment lang, unload ka lang, and then automatic yung lahat ng mga nag-comment doon since they registered on the website, and that's my KPI there, yung registration. Uh, kasi that important sa'yo, ano yung ultimate goal mo? Do they download the app? Do they register? Watch a video? Um, buy your product? Or click a link? Or fill up and share their customer information? It depends on what your objective is. But in this case, ako, registration. So, si Air Asia nagpa-curate ng travel videos or, or content and we created the Air Asia shelf. Tapos ang reward doon, ang panalo nila, big points, yung Air Asia big points, which you can actually use to purchase a flight ticket. So ito na yun, in na natin yung kanina yung sinasabi ko when you actually strategize for an online community. So ito, this is a travel community naman, di ba? And you use travel content, and then you reward them accordingly, engage them with content as well. This one naman um, is basically... Um, using a live event. Pero ang dali lang nito, hindi mo kailangan mag-mount ng mega event kasi hindi masyadong technical. Basta yung usual FB live lang kasi meron lang isang known personality. In this case, uh, mga DJ sa sa MBC. Um, sila yung merong sila yung nag-offer ng Love Radio, Energy FM. So itong mga DJs na to, we tap them 
<clears throat> to actually just engage our communities. Either nagpatawa lang sila, nakipagkwentuhan, nakipagkulitan, ganun lang. Kasi nga, giving back to the community and making sure na they're part of this community that we've, we've been building for True ID. We call the community True ID Click. It's the community naman for creators. So yung mga gusto matuto mag-create ng own content nila. Ayan, si AC Bonifacio, nag-share din. Tsaka some other, kasi ito, if you've noticed may iba pang mga nandito, we also got these people from the community itself. We invited them. Kasi nakita namin, sobrang active nila. So tinanong namin, gusto mo bang sumama at mag-share ng experience mo? Kasi hindi na hindi basta-basta yung content na ginagawa mo, maganda na din. Ha? Kaya sila yung marang, parang natap din namin in creating um, yung user-generated content. And then, yun nga, later on, we call them creator-generated content kasi it's a level up of the usual, usual UGC that you see out there. And we've done this mostly during the pandemic. Here naman, basically, we we were asked to live stream an, 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 an offline event. So kaya O2O talaga online to offline. No? So may nangyayaring physical event um, sa SMX sa near Mall of Asia. And it's called, it was called Cosplay Mini Matsuri, cosplay event. To. And this was, I think, the first hybrid event that they had. They worked with us um, and in, our par in partnership with Animax as well. Um, ang nangyari dito would be habang nangyayari yung physical event naka-livestream din sa True ID and dahil live siya nagko-comment yung mga tao na parang uy, pakita naman nung ano, nagko-cosplay na si Naruto sino dyan kasi may ikot-ikot lang yung mga nagko-cosplay dun sa physical event pupunta lang sila sa video tapos hello, hello, ganyan so live stream yan at the same time may physical event din na parang dun din may mga freebies din na binigay si cosplay yung, yung event organizer ng cosplay mini Matsuri So that was a good collaboration then. Kasi when you engage your communities, it's also good to collaborate with brands and partners that share the same um, either target market, interest. So in this case, yung Animax kasi, they're all about anime. And then anime is very much associated to cosplaying. Diba? So yan yung mga sample execution and collaboration partnerships that you can consider depending on what your product or brand is all about. And since those people would have would be sharing the same interest or they have a common interest you become successful in establishing and building your own community so okay na tayo we know content we know all about communities we know how to look at or at least create a campaign kasi yung mga pinakita ko yun campaign executions na yun, no? and, and i just tried to simplify it since i'm assuming yeah again you've done your homework and you know The, the, the basics of marketing as well. So that's why I jumped directly to campaign strategies, community management, and all. Now we go to the tayo sa exciting part, yung commerce. Kasi when you do commerce, ito na yung translate siya and pumupunta na dun sa actual call to action that you wanted to, to, to really be done by, by your target users or your community members. Again, sabi ko nga either mag-click lang ng link or bumili or mag-download ng app or pumunta sa store mo. Either way, you need to identify ano yon And that's when where the business comes in. No? Uh, kasi hindi naman natin ginagawa itong digital community, especially brand owners or product owners. We don't do this just for the sake of having a community. Let's, let's already accept that. Unless gumawa ka lang ng community for, for NGO purposes or for any advocacy. Okay din yon But We're talking about business here, right? So, yung commerce is a very important part of four Cs. So, derecho ulit. Sample UGC marketing campaign. So, ito na yung full set, no? Yung kanina kasi parang to get give you an appreciation na. Plug and play. And then, I'm introducing here a checklist. Mapapansin nyo may tatlo rito. And this is an example na check dun sa tatlo, no? Naggawa yung community engagement. You've done native advertising. You've done con you considered conversion rate optimization and ito yung about the commerce kasi nag-convert sila to actually buy something. So an example of this is the plug and play and this is like a live program that we established and ito yung na-identify na yung content. We're going to create a, a live show called Plug and Play and we'll be featuring different famous celebrities that would talk about not only True ID but also 
products of our sponsor. So, kumuha rin kami sponsor para naman hindi namin sagot lahat ng cost doon. So, in this case, yung Food Around the World, which is an episode, was sponsored by Angus Paris. Not sure kung baka nandito si Angus Paris. No? But um, Angus Paris actually provided vouchers and those vouchers were used to actually buy Angus Paris. Uh, for anyone who, who was actually watching that show, namigay kami ng um, uh, voucher na Angus Paris. So yung promo participation, they were very active yung lahat ng mga nanood ng live event na yan. Doon naman sa Mukbang with the Champ, ganun din. I think, uh, hindi lang nalagay dito, pero Milk Tea naman yung, yung sponsor nito. Yifang yata, if I, got, if I remember it correctly. But going back, community engagement wise, of course may engage sila. You have the content, yung celebrity talking about food or si, si Alaysa Valdez talking about not only something about, let's say, her personal life, volleyball and all. Um, Nagpagkwentuhan siya with the community. Kasi nga, this is about the true ID community naman, which is mostly people who are into lifestyle, food, travel, sports, yun yun. Native advertising, kasi hindi siya derecho na parang naglagay ka lang ng ad dyan, sobrang advertisement. Kasama siya dun sa content mismo na kinoconsume or pinapanood ng community. And the conversion rate optimization, very particular kasi mga vouchers, may mga code yun. So nakita namin kung ilan talaga yung nag-avail. So check sa tatlong aspects ng UGC marketing campaign itong sample na to. No? The next one, let me play the video first. No? Nandito kami para makipagkapehan. Kwentuhan. At kantahan. Meron din tayong mga pag-giveaway mamaya. Tons of immunobin gift boxes to be given away. So Uy. make sure Uy, to use the hashtag, Grabe, ah. hashtag immunobin. So this one naman, again, it's native advertising. No? Kasi ang content talaga, it's a virtual concert. No? It's a live event uh, that we mounted and we, we created in partnership with Immunobean, and obviously naman, nakabrand na Immunobean, they called it Immunobeats. And then, they, again, serving the community, nagpa-virtual concert. Grabe, sobrang, ang daming nanood nun. Friday night pa yata yun, so parang, ang good vibes lang nung, nung live stream na yon na ginawa under the Immunobean um, Facebook page. So there were like 4,800 comments in that uh in that live uh, stream, 52,000 total views nung, nung live stream na yun. So, engaging the community, obviously, tontuwa siya parang, thank you, Immunobin, for um, inviting Gigi uh, to sing for us and the Gigi vibes. And then, yun nga, nag-serve as native advertising siya, narinig nyo naman sila mismo, yung mga artists, minimension yung Immunobin, pati yung hashtag. So, that's also good for your brand uh, when you actually engage influencers and creators. And then ito, mas, mas matindi ito. No? So ag again, ang community naman ito. Kasi we, we, we dealt with different communities at True Digital. No? May communities ng, ng gumagamit ng True ID. May yung communities of creators. We also even have communities of merchants or SMEs. So dito sa community naman ito, these are members of the creator community. Kasi we actually work with creators for their content to become available on True ID and become available in Southeast Asia since we're present in Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, I mean, parang the whole ASEAN na halos, no? They made True ID. Yung True ID kasi, it's quite big in, in Thailand. Um, in this case, <clears throat> nalaman kasi namin, and this, was ha ha this happened during the pandemic, na ang daming Filipino creators who want to, to be known globally. And because of that, we had this campaign na i-pitch mo buy, malay mo mag-click. We worked with um, the organizers of Bicon in Cebu. It's a conference for creators and influencers. And nag, I'm not sure if familiar kayo sa Shark Tank. So nag-pitch sila ng content concept nila. And kapag na, na, nagustuhan ng judges yung content, magiging finalist sila. And yung top five, would actually be given the chance to produce the first episode or pilot episode. And yung panalo 
will be given the chance to complete the entire series composed of 10 episodes. And mag, lahat yan mapapublish sa True ID. So, siguro maganda makita yung video para alam nyo what really happened. There's a highlight video that I want to show you uh, for your appreciation. Now that we're living in the age of digital content, everyone is documenting everything about anything. So how can you stand out in the vastness of this virtual space? As makers for digital transformation, True ID Click gave the noise content creators from all over the country a chance to be seen and heard on True ID's international platform. And it all started with a click. With the total of 500,000 pesos production grants to be given away, many hopefuls answered the call, but only a few were chosen. Congratulations. You are one of the finalists of True ID Click at Bicon. They rose to the occasion and shared their creative vision with great passion in front of a panel of three well-respected judges who are big names in biz. Each finalist took their shot in a make-or-break pitch where their concept was analyzed, magnified, and realized. How will you make the show a little bit more appealing to the younger market? How do you think this content will stand out among other mom centric type of content? But which one clicked and which were just clickbait? Refine it, go back to it, uh, repurpose, uh, refine, and then Bring it back again. You know, it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't end. So I, I congratulate everyone because just being here makes you all winners. After a round of nerve-wracking deliberations, one emerged victorious. Patricia! Congratulations, Jimmy! Congratulations! You received 100,000 pesos production grant from True ID, and you get the privileged slot to showcase your work on True ID Philippines Facebook page. Congratulations, Jimmy! But wait, there's more. It's time to reveal the four of the creators who earned their spot on the winning team, each receiving a cash grant of 100,000 pesos. Hi, True ID. Thank you so much for choosing my pitch. Maria Clara Rising as one of the winning entries for this year's Bicon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, True ID. Thank you. True ID Philippines for the experience and opportunity. Thank you, True ID. Thank you, True ID. This opportunity. Thank you so much, True ID. Congratulations to all the winners. True ID is truly proud to be part of their journey as they explore the possibilities in the digital realm of content creation. And also, major props to go to the finalists who made it this far. We gave them action cameras so they can keep on going, creating, and joining. Thank you so much for making True ID Click at Bicon a success. This is only the first of many more adventures to come. So do check out the winner's videos this December only on the True ID Philippines Facebook page. And if you missed out or didn't make the cut, don't lose hope. You've got a full year to level up and try again. So keep on reaching for the stars and we'll see you next year. So, so that pitch is uh, the culminating activity of um, like a three or four month campaign. So, siguro yan ay pinakamalaki na community engagement or execution that we've done because um, we engaged the community of creators. Nagpa, humingi kami ng submissions of entries. I think ang nag-submit about 200 plus tapos na, na streamline namin to just 10 finalists and then yung 10 finalists yung engage namin what's good about this is the community of creators felt na they're really part of the journey and then nung napili sila sobrang alam mo yun, galing talaga sa community it's not even i mean walang script very authentic kinuha mo sa community mismo yung nag-create ng content and those content are now available on true id uh, and hindi lang True ID Philippines, pero pati sa Thailand, sa Vietnam, Indonesia, available na lahat yun yung, kasi original content na yun na lumalabas, 
created by Filipino creators for True ID. So just to recap, this is my summary slide. The three key factors of UGC marketing campaign, your community engagement. I've, I've spoken a lot about this concept, your community engagement. You need to connect, listen, and interact genuinely with your fans or followers. Number two, you need to master the art and science of promoting through storytelling, native advertising. Kasi nga, diba, nobody clicks an ad. They usually skip the ad. But if it's native advertising at nakapasok dun sa content that you've chosen to, to use to promote or engage and build your community, um, you go for it. And then third, dito na yung mas nagiging hardworking ka, the conversion rate optimization, you need to look at data, insights, you need to look at the results. Ilan ba ang nag-click? Ilan ba ang nag-convert? Ilan na nag-register? Ilan ang bumili? Kasi kung hindi siya nag-convert, then you might need to look at other ways. You don't try just one thing. Try several experiments. Kung limited ang budget, dalawa, tatlo, pero small budget lang. The scale kasi depends on you, on how much you want to actually invest on this. But I'm telling you, if the community that you build would be composed of users or members or customers that authentically like your product, you don't even have to spend Actually, sila na mismo magpo-promote ng product mo. And since they belong, they feel they belong to that community, they would feel they're like part owner of your brand or your product. I, I, I know that kasi ito nga, itong mismo mga creators na to na na-build namin, they feel like they're part of True ID. And nung ginawa nila yung content nila, it's like a passion project for them na sinuporta ng True ID. And yun, because the True ID stands for that, that concept of authenticity, of bringing Filipino creators in the global scene. So that's how we're positioning it. And you too can have your own um, objective or positioning uh, in terms of using community engagement and creating your strategy to build that community that would wherein your brand or product would benefit in the end. All right, so if you have any questions, clarifications, I am very excited to answer them at the Q&A section of these uh, of this presentation or event. Uh, with that, back to you, Apple. Wow, a virtual round of applause for Mr. Dindo Marzang and True ID Philippines. Grabe. Our dear partners, if you were one of the many who needed to hear of a crash course, Sir Dindo Marzang just helped us with, including me, and those who were as thrilled as I am watching the Ipitch mo bay, baka mag-click, okay? Raise your emoji hands, everyone, and I'm asking you now, okay? And if you can, you can also share in the comment section your favorite takeaway from Sir Dindo Morsan's presentation. Ayon, ako naman personally mo ka Easter. Uh, I was able to relate. Uh, it was under the four C's of digital customer engagement. Um, I think it's the Q&A forum entries. You know, like as a consumer, talaga namang isa ako doon sa mga bonggang bonggang. I will not just leave five stars in the review segment. I will like post a picture. You know why? Because of the rewards system. So it's really effective. And also talking about the community. When you are like... um your affection and your belief with the brand is deep-rooted talaga. You want to support the community and the brand. Tama ba mga ka Eastern? Let us know in the comment section if you agree and please share with us your favorite takeaway from Sir Dindo's presentation. And syempre, while Sir Dindo was sharing with us, we hope you were also able to get the chance to participate in the trivia questions happening in the chat box right now tama ba okay and if you did mga ka eastern you will get a chance to win 500 peso worth of vouchers from giveaway and our proud winners will be announced in the chat box also so please again make sure 
to use or make sure that your username is easily identifiable and it is the same name you use when you're registered for our e-huddle. All right. And mga ka-Eastern, I'm also taking this time to congratulate all of our chat Q&A winners. So guys, congratulations to all of you. Cheers. And congratulations. And again, while the energy is high and contagious in the comment section, Maka Eastern and our dear partners, get ready for the first raffle draw announcement. Woohoo! Okay, so the moment you signed in for our e huddle, automatically gives you a chance to win one of our raffle prizes. So please, Maka Eastern, keep your eyes on your screen because once we flash the names of the winners, okay, and you see that it is your name, you have to make sure to take a screenshot or take a picture of it and please send it to marketing at etpi.com.ph with the subject line Eastern E-Huddle June 23, 2022 Raffle. And please do not forget to include your information like your full name, your company name, your company address, and your contact number. Okay, so I hope you're able to catch that, mga ka Eastern. And hindi ko na papatagalin to. For the first half of our raffle, we are picking two lucky e huddle participants who will be receiving how much? One e gift certificate each worth 2,000 pesos from Giltway. Woohoo! All right. So I know you guys are all excited to know who our raffle winners are. So without further ado, here is your first minor raffle winner. And our first minor raffle winner is none other than Mr. Marcelo Tomas. Congratulations, sir. You are now a very happy winner of our 2,000 pesos worth of voucher from Gift Away. Guys, let us congratulate Sir Marcelo Tomas in the comments section. That would be like a great way for you to be a sport, right? And now for our second winner for our minor raffle who will also be receiving 2,000 pesos worth of voucher from Gift Away. Okay, we are excited to find out who is joining Sir Marcelo Tomas. Da -da -da -da. And another happy winner is, of course, Sir Neil Carlo Munoz. Congratulations, sir. You are joining Sir Marcelo Tomas, and now you are celebrating because you are our big winners of the 2,000 pesos worth of vouchers from gift away yes hey all righty so again a big congratulations to our big happy winners for the first round of our raffle and for the rest of us including myself okay stay tuned for the next part of our webinar because we will be holding another raffle announcement later on and maka eastern as we move along with our e-huddle Okay, our next speaker will take us back to the basics as well as the complexities of adapting to the new business environment. Hmm. She is the segment marketing manager for SME and consumer at Eastern Communications. Here to talk about maintaining customer trust in the digital world. Maka Eastern, let us all welcome Miss Carmina Marquez.
Thank you, Apple. Good afternoon, everyone. First off, I would like to thank each one of you for attending today's session. I hope you were able to learn a lot of insights from our guest speaker, Mr. Dindo Marzan. For today, I will be discussing an equally important topic that is oftentimes neglected in the digital landscape, which is maintaining customer trust in the digital world. You might be wondering why do we need to talk about customer trust specifically in the digi digital landscape? So the answer is simple. I'm sure each and every one of us have experienced at least once in our lives the feeling of trust being broken and it definitely is not a good feeling. More often than not, it leaves a traumatic experience to both parties. And this holds true, not only with interpersonal relationships, but in business and in the digital world as well. It has been proven that companies or businesses that can establish, maintain, and sustain trust will be the ones winning over customers and turning them into lifelong clients. And if you don't take good care of your customer's trust, it can easily ruin your business reputation that you worked so hard to build with just a snap of a finger. And this is why we're here today, so that together we can understand how to establish and maintain trust in the digital world. But before we dive into the details, let's first take a look at the digital landscape here in the country to have a better understanding of what lies ahead. So as you can see, based on the global overview report, the Philippines ranked second place next to South Africa in terms of the average time spent online among people aged between 16 to 64 years old. Another recent report shows that 68% of our total population are internet users, while 82.4% are active social media users. So of course, we are all aware by now how the pandemic has rapidly increased the pace of digitization over the past two years in the country, and the numbers flashed on your screens clearly show that as well. Now that we're traversing through the next or new normal, we're mixing current practices with old ones, and we're retaining those that we truly saw beneficial during the height of the pandemic. So even though people are hungry for face-to-face -face interactions, Experts still see that there will be a steady increase in digital adoption in the coming years. So in the next few slides, I will be showing some factors that have contributed and will continue to contribute to the rapid increase in digitization in the country. So first on our list is the e-commerce industry in the Philippines. The pandemic has awakened the entrepreneurial spirit in most people that the growth of online sellers in the country rose to 5,000%. And this is according to the data presented by DTI. And apart from this, the number of online shoppers significantly increased as well due to the prolonged lockdowns. So experts are saying that online shopping is one of the trends that will definitely stay even after the pandemic because of its convenience. Second on our list is online banking. So e-commerce and online banking are somehow tied together. So the convenience of online shop shopping and online payment or transfer has led to the increase in both industries. So in fact, according to the BSP governor, Benjamin Jokno, they are very optimistic that they will achieve their goal to include 70% of the adult population within the financial inclusion by next year. Next on our list is, of course, the hybrid work setup. Since companies saw the benefits of working from home during the pandemic, employee sentiment around hybrid work is growing increasingly positive that it became a criteria when choosing employers. So the 2021 Ernst & Young Work Reimagined Employer Survey revealed that 84% of companies in the region plan to make moderate to extensive hybrid work changes and are actively promoting hybrid work to attract and retain talent. Actually, even now that our restrictions are more relaxed, employees are raising concerns about the rising costs, especially with the events happening around the world, like the Russian-Ukraine war, that's been influencing price hike and inflation worldwide. In fact, 
Um, some of the ITBPO companies are raising concerns about this as well, and they they're constantly in talks with uh, the in, the IT Business Process Association of the Philippines to discuss and look into ways on how to include work from home or a hybrid work model in the ITBPO sector's operation in the Philippines. Last but not the least, so as the country re slowly reopens its schools for limited face-to-face -face classes, the Department of Education said that blended learning will still be implemented, although the decision depends on the regional directors in different schools. The DepEd secretary said that there are, until now, there are schools that cannot fulfill the conditions or requirements of face-to-face -face classes, and this is one or the primary reason why online learning will still remain in the country for at least the next couple of years. So now that you've seen an overview of the internet landscape in the Philippines and its tremendous growth due to the increasing digital adoption, it's also important to understand the risk associated with it. In the digital world, new risks emerge every hour of every day, especially for your business. All the numbers of internet users and online transactions that you've seen in the previous slides are targets for hackers. That's why it has become increasingly clear that organizations must take a proactive and strategic approach to mitigate this to build customer trust. So if you really want your business to thrive in the, di the digital arena, it's not enough that you have the right product and ex an excellent service. So all the numbers of internet users and online transactions that you've seen in the previous slides are are targets for hackers. That's why it has become increasingly clear that organizations must take a proactive, strategic approach to mitigate this, to build customer trust. So if you want your business to thrive in the digital arena, it's not enough that you have the right product and excellent service. You must also be aware of the risk, risks associated with your business. So in this slide, um, you'll see the overview of the threat landscape. And according to Trend Micro, a multinational cybersecurity software, they've detected over 94 billion block threats over the past year. Another cybersecurity software company also reported that in the Philippines alone, they were able to detect 50 million web threat attempts. And that's an average of 380,000 malicious files discovered daily. So the increased digitization also fast-tracked cybercrime and fraud. But sadly, in the Philippines, cybersecurity is not seen as a priority yet. And because the country is still at the initial stages of digital transformation, there seems to be a misconception that threat actors do not pose as a serious a threat or that the Philippines is not a target. And that is why we are one of the most targeted countries in the world. So nowadays, cyber criminals are becoming more creative. They are upping the scale, sophistication, and frequency of their attacks, causing major threats to business of any cycle. And this is not only happening in the Philippines, but this is happening world, worldwide as well. So please know that what you see in this slide is just an overview of the different techniques that they use. If we break this down further, it might take us hours, but I think the previous slide has made it clear how often and diversified these attacks are. And now we're going to move to the important part, which is understanding the cost of these attacks to your business. So you might be wondering, what are the impacts of these attacks to your business? So here in this slide, we've outlined, we've, we've outlined a few and we've further divided it, divided it into short-term and long-term effects. For the short term, of course, it involves penalties. And one data shows that a data breach costs 37.5 million for enterprise businesses. And meanwhile, for small and medium enterprises, it costs around 3.9 million pesos. Apart from the penalties, one of the consequences of not having a secure um, website would be theft of intellectual property and data loss corruption 
which will also lead to disruption on business operations. However, most people don't know that perhaps the biggest long-term consequence of a data breach is the loss of customer trust. You can always regain the money or the data that you've lost, but it will be harder for you to repair the damage it can bring to your reputation. So that said, businesses must understand that, that in e-commerce or in every digital transaction, digital trust plays a major role in everything that you do as your customers have to share their sensitive information with businesses like yours, assuming that you'll have the proper security measures in place to protect their data. So a study conducted by PricewaterhouseCoopers show that 92% of consumers agree that companies must be proactive about data protection, while 85% of the consumers won't shop at the business if they have concerns about their security practices. So before I end this presentation, I would just like to remind you that a good reputation is often a company's most prized asset, as a business must work constantly to build and maintain the integrity of your own brand. However, one compromising episode like a data breach can tarnish even the best of reputations. And of course, as an ICT solutions provider, we are one with you to defend against these cyber criminals to keep you and your business safe. So at Eastern, we have different solutions that can protect you before, during, and after an attack. So if you want to discuss this further, please feel free to talk to our Eastern representatives or your account managers. And that would be the end of my presentation. Again, I would like to thank each and every one of you for spending your afternoon with us. I would like to turn you over now to Apple. Wow, informative and easy to digest. The two important ingredients in making sure audience engagement is at its peak. Thank you so much, Ms. Carmina, for sharing your expertise with us and all of our partners. And Ms. Carmina, we almost forgot about the quick audio glitch earlier. <laughs> all right, so on a more serious note, Maka Eastern, we were all struck by the opening quote of Miss Carmina's presentation, right? Let me know in the comment section if you guys were jotting that down. But it says, trust takes uh, years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. That's why it is important to equip and protect our business with the best business solutions that a service provider can give us. So... Here we are, um, Eastern Communications. And again, you can talk to our account managers after our Reimagine Resilience e-huddle. All right. So now, Maka Eastern, our speakers are ready to entertain your questions. So I'd like to call on Mr. Dindo Marzan and Ms. Carmina Marquez to join me on screen. And of course, while they're at it, Maka Eastern, you still have time, okay? Type in your questions in the chat box below so we could ask Ms. Carmina and Sir Dindo about it. So here, hello, Sir Dindo. Hello, Ms. Carmina. Hi, Apple. Okay, so just an icebreaker question, all right, before we get to the meat of the Q&A from our Ka Eastern. So, ang question ko lang naman po is very easy. Usually, I ask um, our speakers this. So, how do you start your day? What is a usual morning routine for either Ms. Uh, Sir Dindo or Ms. Carmina? So, I think I'll, I'll start with Sir Dindo. How do you usually start your day, sir? So super basic. I I have this hobby of drinking a glass full of water. I put it beside my my bed there, so to clean up. Because I I I think that's a good practice to to get rid of dehydration while while you slept eight hours or so. Yes, sir. Replenishing and re-nourishing. Because we were dehydrated for the entire eight hours. So that's a nice way to put it. Okay. Everyone, Maka Eastern, and if you are feeling, you know, a little drowsy and groggy, I think it's really the lack of hydration. Kaya yan, take it from Sir Dindo. And now we want to hear it from Miss Carmina. So how do you usually start your day, ma'am? Uh, 
Actually, same with Sir Dindo. I start my day with usually a warm cup of water or tea. Usually that wakes me up and then you know, shower, <laughs> then ready for work. <laughs> what about meditation? Like a bit of yoga and stretching? Me, I do that before I sleep time. naman. Okay, great, great. So I, I think we have those common denominators. So Maka Eastern, if you guys uh, do those practices, let us know in the comments section. Okay, so now, Sir Dindo and Miss Carmina, after our icebreaker, now we're going to get down to the questions that our Ka Easterns have shared with us earlier. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> Okay, so this is a general question that I'll be asking both uh, Sir Dindo and Miss Carmina, and we will be hearing from Sir Dindo first. So here it is, sir. Okay, so this is from our Eastern. Uh, Sir Dindo, now that everybody is going back or getting back to normal, what would you say is the most important thing for a brand persona? I could think of two things, no? Number one, I think for a brand persona, you have to portray that you're a little bit more sensitive. Because after the pandemic, you know, mental health and the top of yung election re- elections pa, diba? So politically, um, pagod lahat ng mga tao. So I think if we're going to be more sensitive as a brand in terms of what we communicate, what campaigns we do, uh, that would be something that, that is worth considering. The second one would be more flexible. Because before, before the pandemic, um, syempre, we had rules, we had processes, but things have become different right now. Uh, after the pandemic and with the new normal, or also known as now normal, diba? Yeah. Um, you have to be more um, flexible in adjusting in your processes, like taking orders, if you're in the food and beverage business, you should be online or in terms of customer support, easily accessible. Um, those things need to be considered as a brand so that the, the customers, the users who are quite um, over fatigued or, or, or mentally sad right now because of what happened would, would feel a little bit better that you're with them, you're with them in terms of as a brand or as a product or as a service provider. That, that's how I see it. Thank you, Sir Dindo. And yes, I agree with you, sir, especially with, you know, uh, we just had a very emotional um, election, as some would say, right? So it's it's great to add to a brand persona sensitivity and be sensitive and what do you call this? Be able to tap into the emotions of your audience in a way when you share your ads and your, you know, your content. So that um, it's, it's not abrasive, you know. Right? Correct. So yeah, I agree with that sensitivity and flexibility, especially in the now normal. So we really have to have a quick shift on the like how we do things. Because it's it's different now from the pre-pandemic era and the post-pandemic era that we are currently living in now. So maraming salamat, Sir Dindo. And now I'll be um, asking the same question to you, Miss Carmina. So from our Ka Eastern. Uh, I'm going to be reading the question again. So now that everybody is going back or getting back to the now normal, what would you say is the most important thing for a brand persona? I think Sir Dindo is the expert in this field. But just to add to what he said, um, when it comes to brand persona, it's simply the or it's basically the simplification or the personification of your company and how you want your customers to perceive you as a brand. And of course, to tie it with my presentation earlier, I think one of the personality traits that you would like your customers to see is that you're a trustworthy brand. So Mm -hmm. regardless whether it's a pandemic or not, it's important that you show that that, yeah, that you're a trustworthy brand and you know your brand persona can be anything like it can be fun adventurous or a thought leader but whatever voice you choose to be it's always important to to show your customers that your brand can be trusted so mm-hmm. as I mentioned also in my presentation that um, your customers if you like if your customers trust your brand they can even become a lifelong supporter of your brand and that's why for me it's important to establish yourselves as trustworthy first and everything else will follow 
Thank you, Thank you, Ms. Carmina. And yeah, I agree with you because uh, when your brand is, of course, trustworthy, the people who consume your products are actually going to be creating the community, which actually was um, covered by Sir Dindo's presentation earlier. And they are the great driving force in uh, instilling the, you know, the, the power of your brand all throughout. Right. So again, maraming salamat, Sir Dindo and Miss Carmina. But we are not done yet. Okay. We have uh, more questions for the two of you. So again, I'll be asking uh, Sir Dindo for this one. Sir, here is the question of our Ka Eastern. So, Sir, how will businesses from the hospital, education, and BPO sectors benefit from having a digital community strategy in the long run? Grabe, parang pang thesis defense, ha? <laughs> uh, Sir, they really took the time. Yeah. They're not letting you go without it's getting hospital the answer. Hospital bar hospitality. Hospital sector mismo. Like, yes, sir, the sector. Yeah, hospital, not hospitality, no? So, si siguro, I, I'll start with BPO first, no? We know BPOs, um, the core of their business would be recruiting a lot of people, di ba? Kasi they're into outsourcing. I think establishing a community that your brand uh, is about fun, it's trustworthy. I mean, from Carmina's um, uh, input earlier, or at least uh, good vibes. I think the, the call centers are already doing this, diba? like if they're recruiting some call center agents at the same time, they say na their brand is about fun, making sure that you have work-life balance, etc., etc. So I think establishing that community wherein it's not just about work and doing night shifts or um, graveyard shifts, um, it could also be uh, a fellowship. There could be barcada or friendship. That's something that you could, you know, establish your brand persa persona if you're in the BPO sector. And at the same time, make sure that you you protect the benefits of these employees. Those things would matter really in this this time. No, na um, things are changing. Even turnover, no, employee turnover is quite high because people uh, and co companies are going to the hybrid mode. Um, for the Hospital sector, sobrang uh, ano to, associated Trend. with the, yeah, the post pandemic, right? So it's all about the health, no? Na parang get your HMO card or, you, you know, even though you're in the hospital sector, you're always associated with the medical and health sector, no? So I think it's more of communicating that your, your community is about the ecosystem. You're not just about getting people hospitalized, but at the same time, keeping them or preventing them from getting hospitalized. That's a, a different take, right? Rather than yeah. just pushing your service that people get sick and you go to our hospital. So I think through partnerships with the health sector, medical sector, HMO, that would be something to foster in the community that you're trying to build. Um, the other one is, what's the other one? Sorry, if I, if I for- um, Education, other? sir. Oh yeah, education is about um, the, the students, right? Especially college and high school students, they're into online communities as well and social media. It's very important to show that your school, uh, again, lagi kasi I, I'm a believer of balance. You were discussing earlier nga meditation, no? parang yin and yang. No? It's not all about pure square studying, but there has to be extracurricular as well. So if you establish that your school is about a community that provides a holistic approach in education, not just academically being in a classroom, but also outside your learning through experiential uh, activities, then I think that's a good positioning of your online community. Um, some schools have done this already, sharing that they have um, online class, and at the same time, outside the class, they get to have fellowship and brotherhood, lalo na mga exclusive for boys as well. So yung mga ganon, uh, it's important when you communicate so that you will accommodate or you attract more potential students. Thank you, Sir Dindo. I hope our Ka Eastern who like throw that question to Sir Dindo is happy and satisfied with the answer. Very specific one. And now we're going to be going to Ms. Carmina. Hi, ma'am. So this is a question from our Ka Eastern. Uh, is there an encompassing cybersecurity service that can cover all of my needs? Sadly, there is no one-size-fits-all cybersecurity solutions right now. However, the good news is there are so many amazing solutions available already out there in the market that have a wide spectrum of cybersecurity features. So what's amazing is that 
as time moves forward, there are more and more solutions coming to light. And as an ICT solutions provider, we are working especially hard to make these solutions available to, to you as soon as possible. So to be able to find out if we have the right solutions already with us, I strongly suggest that you contact your local Eastern account managers and discuss what you think your company needs. So I think that's the first step in being prepared to defend your brand. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Carmina. Yes, I agree with you, ma'am, that there is no like a cookie cutter approach to all of your problems, right? So it's really important that you talk to our account manager so they could customize or personalize uh, the solutions that they could help um, cater to your businesses. So yon. All right. So now, naman, we're going to be checking out another question from our Eastern, and this one is for Sir Dindo. Hello, sir. Okay, so Sir Dindo, could you give me a quick overview of where to best put my brand persona? Um, if Facebook, what can I expect? If it's LinkedIn, more of business. For Twitter, is this still a viable place to put a brand persona? I hope you're able to catch that, Sir Dindo, but don't worry, I'll repeat it for you. Extend. No, no, it's okay. Extensive question na naman. <laughs> Parang ang sagot strategy, no? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start I'll with Facebook. On, yeah, I'll answer it based on my my approach here as well for, for our company, no? Um, Facebook kasi, and so hopefully hindi masaktan yung mga a bit old this year, no? We, we see Facebook kasi more of millennials. And millennials are already old in a way. Unfortunately, no? Gen Zs are, are the, <laughs> the, 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 the youngsters now. But Ang nasa Facebook kasi are millennials and married people, um, mm -hmm. all those in their uh, late 30s to 40s. So if your target market would be in that age range, Facebook is still the best um, um, social media that you should be present in. And no doubt about it, ang dami natin, ako millennial ako, ang dami natin millennials na mm -hmm. nasa Facebook pa. And you have to be there. You have to have a Facebook page for a brand. No? Um, however, if you're targeting Gen Zs and the younger ones, I think Gen Alpha na yung next no? after Gen Z. So you have to go TikTok, unfortunately. No? So gagawa ka ng mga mm -hmm. content mo na may sayaw-sayaw or informative or snippets of videos. You really have to be in TikTok. Nandun lahat ng mga uh, Gen Zs natin. If your brand is targeting that uh, um, generation or that um, age bracket, um, now for Twitter, this really helps with um, helps companies that are into thought leadership or um, like for example the brand uh, Eastern, diba? Eastern mm -hmm. Communications thought leadership in terms of cybersecurity, in terms of solutions. If you are into that brand or product, you have to kasi say na you're an expert in something. And Twitter kasi with those short form content, short text content to be specific, you can actually give snippets of thoughts, ideas, and and advice, parang consultant. So, kung medyo ganun ang position ng brand mo, Twitter is the way to go. Um, of course, naririg kasi, no? Sa Twitter yung mga trending. Halimbawa, fans club, tas biglang ipapa trend yung isang artista. Twitter is also used in a hashtag. Yeah. Uh, in a hashtag. So, pwede rin yun if you're into that in terms of trend jacking, no? And then, Lastly, Instagram kasi is already connected to Facebook, so it's almost one and the same. So, kung nasa Facebook ka, most likely nasa Instagram ka rin. And you're right, LinkedIn is more to, for B2B. So, if you're approaching decision makers like um, CMO, C-suite, or C, um, chief technology officers, product managers, nandun lahat yan sa LinkedIn. If you're selling solutions, services that are more on the B2B side of things, LinkedIn is the way to go. And it's good to have a tech paper there or a case study uploaded on those um, in, in, in that LinkedIn page of yours to engage more decision makers. Let them download it and get their information so they can be your leads. Thank you, Sir Dean Do. And to our Ka Eastern who asked that question, so depende talaga what your, your brand is and what your purpose is. To get so whether it's on Facebook and LinkedIn, Twitter, um, you have to know your purpose and kung ano yung result that you want to get out of whatever you post or add you post in the platform. And the best uh, recommendation I could give you, our Ka Eastern, is to keep in touch with Sir Dindo Marzan, okay, <laughs> true ID Philippines. Okay, and for the last question that we have, this one is for Miss Carmina. Okay. 
Ms. Carmina, this is your question, ma'am. They say many uh, vulnerabilities are the fault of people. So how do I keep uh, my people educated, especially with cybersecurity? Um, again, it's different for business, but sending out information via email to make sure that they are specially informed of possible phishing emails or the protocols you've sent in place to mitigate any new attacks or what to do when they somehow receive suspicious emails. Um, this is a must. So data breaches and attacks can be very costly, but a lot of it can be avoided as long as your people are alert, learned, mm -hmm. and learned and know what to do in these cases. So for many, for any businesses to grow, you need to have people and with that, they need to know how to defend your brand. So make sure that um, your team keeps them informed. You know? So that's the number one problem now. Lacking information talaga can result in more vulnerabilities than having a system that hasn't been updated in years. So. All right, thank you so much, Miss Carmina. And there you have it, Maka Eastern. Uh, that caps off our QA portion. And of course, uh, before I let Sir Dindo and Miss Carmina go, our Ka Eastern would like to hear some parting messages from both of you, our dear speakers. So let's start with Sir Dindo. Sure, sure. I, I, I can give you three things. Number one, um, go hybrid. It can't be just online. It's online and offline, O2O. Number two, um, collaborate with content creators. They're the best. They're the best partners in terms of your marketing strategies and getting your brand out there. And then num number three, um, I would suggest that you actually think of um, going the going to an extra going at, at the extra mile in terms of um, addressing your communities. Have a donut with the community. Have a donut with your community. And you know, if you've listened to my presentation, you know what having a donut with your community means. Knowing them and being more authentic and really becoming part of that community, not just as a brand, but as, as a friend, as a partner of, of those members of your community. Thank you so much, Sir Dindo. And now, Ms. Carmina Marquez. Um, for me, I just want to thank everyone who spent their afternoon with us. Um, Sir Dindo, Apple, thank you. And I just want to say, don't forget to contact your account managers if you have any questions so that we can thus discuss how we can emerge stronger together. So there. All right. So there you have it. Thank you so much, Sir Dindo Morzan. And of course, our very own Miss Carmina Marquez. Thank you. All right, so Maka Eastern, a big virtual applause for our dear speakers today. And I know you will agree that was indeed a very insightful discussion. And we hope that you, our dear audience, learned as much as I did. And like what I said earlier, Sana, Dubai, you were able to keep your, <laughs> uh, I hope you see this. So I was jotting down ideas and information that Sir Dindo and Ms. Carmina was able to share during our or their presentation. All right, so now Maka Eastern, our dear friends, your feedback matters to us. So please do take the time to answer our survey through the QR code that we will flash on screen. And once you fill out the survey, 50 lucky winners will get a special token from Eastern Communications. All right, mga family, mga ka Eastern, as promised, di ba? Ayan. Okay, we are gonna keep that QR code posted and flashed on your screen there. So get your cell phones now and scan that. There you have it. And as promised, mga ka Eastern, we are now gonna be drawing the winner for our major raffle prize. So, sino nga ba ang mananalo? All right, so again, the winner should take a screenshot of the announcement on screen and please send it to marketing at ecpi.com.ph with the subject line Eastern e June 23, 2022 raffle. And please, please do not forget to include your information like your full name, your company name, your company address, and your contact number. Okay, so are you guys ready? Ready na ba? Raise your emoji hands in the comment section, Maka Eastern. I'll be waiting for you to blow up the comment section before I announce the last and the major raffle prize winner of our 
raffle segment for today. Okay, so let me see. We see a lot of people. Ayan. Raise your emoji hands. There, I think everyone is ready and excited to find out who our major raffle prize winner is. So our winner will be getting 3,000 pesos worth of e-gift certificate from Giftway. Woohoo! Alright, so we need an atin papatigalin to. Without further ado, direct. Let's roll it. And our major prize winner, taking home 3,000 pesos worth of e-gift certificate from Gift Away is none other than Miss Janica Miami Sabado. Congratulations, Miss Janica. You are now a proud and a happy winner of our 3,000 pesos worth of voucher from Gift Away. I like what they always say. Please don't spend it in one place. Okay. All right. So again, a big congratulations to all of our three raffle winners for today. Okay. So Maka Eastern, that is it for today, guys. Our e-huddle reimagining resilience has come to an end. Just for now, we will be seeing you again next month. But before you go, please, Maka Eastern, take the time to answer our feedback form. So again, we will be flashing another QR code. And once you fill out the survey, 50 lucky winners will get a special prize from Eastern Communications. All right, so get your cell phones and start scanning that QR code on your screens right now. I'm super excited for our 50 lucky winners. Okay, Malaka Eastern, we appreciate your time. And it's been a great pleasure to be your host for this afternoon. Again, my name is Apple Grace Mendoza, and we would love to see you on the next e-huddle. Bye!